this morning. Peace, my friends. I say hi to other folks. Who did I didn't say hi to? Who did I miss? Sean, PL, Quiet Energy, Nancy, Annie. Oh, what a what a morning for a paddle. Hey, Ellen over there along the coast of Maine. So welcome, my friends. Peace to all of us. Peace to you. Mystical theology near church. Mystical near church. Not church. Not church. Mystical theology through my lens of near-death experience and more. No dogma, no doctrine, no bravo, Sierra. I'm a mystic who speaks with a Christian accent. To me, Jesus sounds like a near-death experiencer. There was no religion in heaven when I was dead. I lost my religion in heaven. I lost my faith in heaven. So don't mistake these two things. But Jesus sounds like a near-death experiencer. When I was dead, it was just abundant love and welcome. Capital A, capital L, capital W, abundant love and welcome beyond human comprehension and your wildest imaginations. But it is also living here right now inside of us. No presence, no golden light, no breath, no life, no brain, no body, no living. We're currently exploring the Gospel of Thomas, in depth, deconstructing literalism constantly and teaching the truth that heaven is within you and is you. And I didn't come to this conclusion through reading the Gospel of Thomas or any other book. I came to this conclusion when I was dead and when I came back. And it wasn't by reason I came to the conclusion. It was by experience of truth that this is reality. You are made of original goodness. You have golden light inside you at the core of your being that gives all of your soul, your consciousness, your energy, life, and your body too. The universal consciousness, capital U, capital C, the universal consciousness is here now among us and with us. Where two or three are gathered, the I am is present, radiant, shutting off the cars, the present, radiant, multiplying, and experiential. The divine is these things. It's present to us. It radiates in us. It's multiplying among us, and it is experiential. We can feel it. We collect our community together here at Not Church by focusing our inner world, focusing on our inner journey, focusing on our inner journey and letting it flow out from us naturally without force, just letting it be. By focusing ourselves together, we chant these three ohms, ohm, vibrating chest, vibrating throat, vibrating third eye, feeling the vibration inside of yourself, of the sound. And then we settle into a brief time of centering prayer practice. But Pick your own meditation. You have a meditation, join us with that. But in centering prayer, pick a single word. Maybe this is your first time. Perhaps the word love. Breathe in nasally into your belly and release it. Chanting your word. And when your mind wanders, return to your prayer. Return to your chant. Return to your mantra. A word about Hatha Yoga or any kind of physical yoga that you practice, Iyengar or... Um, Kundalini. I realized this morning in my practice something I probably have never told you about my physical practice of yoga, that I practice with my eyes shut as much as possible. That's my default. Eyes closed. What happens in the practice then is that the body must slow down to maintain balance and form. That slowing allows the mind and the breath to look inside the body, to feel where you are in space, to feel your muscular structure, to relax the muscles that you're not using and tense the muscles that you are. Eyes closed yoga. All right, that's just an aside for my friends. When I was practicing, my physical yoga friends, when I was practicing this morning, I was just running down to my root chakra, back up again and back down again and back up again. And I realized that 
in my passage of all of my chakras, without thinking too much, I touch my mind briefly on each chakra in sequence, just very briefly down my center, very br briefly, each touching each chakra on the way up. And so for my more advanced students who've been practicing the wheel or practicing the, the centering heart prayer that we did last week, or the, then we to the throat last week, let's just try to touch them on the way down, touch them on the way up. So let's go, let's gather together. Breath in, belly and lungs. Chant your word. Today, the Gospel of Thomas 9, Energy Transference. Jesus taught firsthand from mystical experience. In the Gospel of Thomas, he says, Now, look, listen. A sower went out, and I changed this into the first person. I changed it into the first person because Jesus always speaks from direct experience. We begin again. Jesus says, Now, look, listen, a sower went out. I went out with a handful of seeds and I scattered them. Some dropped on the gravel road and the birds came and pecked them up. Others fell on the rock ledge and did not root in the thin soil, and they did not put forth ears. Others fell among the thorns and were choked, and caterpillars ate them like my tomatoes. Others fell on suitable soil, and it produced fine fruit. Those seeds yielded six times and one hundred times, twenty percent more. Now, look, listen. In the three different translations I looked at this week, each one translated it differently. That first word. That first word was variously translated as now. Look, listen. These three different translations are the same word. Be in the now. Now. Let those who have eyes to see, see. And those who have ears to hear, hear. Look, listen with the single eye of your heart. The single eye of your heart. With the single ear of your heart. In the now. What does a contemplative practice of centering on yoga or tai chi or in the tea ceremony, what does it teach? It teaches the single eye, the single heart, pardon me, yes, the single heart in the now and the ear of the heart. It teaches the eye and the ear and the now, and also the single heart, 
That's what it's all based in. The single heart given in love to the one beloved. That's what this is all about. More than any of the other sayings, Jesus repeats those words. Let those who have ears hear. Let those who have eyes see. To see and to hear. It seems unfair that some of us have vision and to see and, and ears to listen. Why some and why not others? Why is it that way? Why is some soil ready to plant? First, the farmer or the gardener prepares the ground to be receptive. But I'll come to that. Three out of four of the places, three out of four, three out of the four places that these wisdom seeds spoken land on the ground end in failure in this saying. One quarter of the time, the wisdom roots in fertile soil and produces a great abundance. Three quarters of the time, the good seeds, scattered by the hand of the divine, lands in hostile places. Not much to be done about it when the seed lands. But for the sower, maybe he should be taking better aim, I don't know, wasting seed. The sower is broadcast seeding. You ever broadcast seed? You take that grass seed and you fling it out there or that clover seed and you fling it out there and you land it everywhere. And some lands in the gravel road and some lands on the ledge where I live and some lands in the weeds and some lands in the prepared soil. Letting it land where it will, hoping it takes root. The seeds that Jesus was talking about, it's energy transference. He wasn't just giving words. Inside his words, woven from the, the core of his being, from the very center of the middle of the center of the center of the middle of himself, and his ground of his origin of his being, he was speaking words woven with light with wisdom. It wasn't just his words. It's never just the words. The words can't carry the ineffable. This parable, every parable he told, he had the same problem. He couldn't say exactly what he meant. And if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, after, I think it's in chapter 13, I think it's 13. Anyway, so where this parable exists, after that, there's an explanation. Pretty likely he didn't say the explanation of what it means. Pretty likely the editor put that in after to try to explain. Pretty likely the explanations of parables didn't come out of the mouth of Jesus because the problem is that no one can say what the ineffable is and always uses metaphor. Yes, in that explanation, there is metaphor, and maybe if you went to church, you heard it, and I'm not going to get into it here. You can go to the Bible and read it for yourself, but that is probably a redaction written in by the editor, by the person who wrote it, by the writer, or one of the redactors, one of the editors after, as a way to explain the inexplainable. I'd rather approach this without that baggage. I'd rather look inside the Gospel of Thomas itself as if it were an independent book which it is. And every time Jesus speaks in the sayings in the Gospel of Thomas, he's struggling with the metaphor. How do I say the unsayable? And what he did, and what I believe, and I do have a little belief about this, what I believe he was doing was weaving the light inside his words that were landing in the hearts of the prepared soil of those who had ears to hear and eyes to see. It wasn't just the language. It was the divine Shaktipat. It was the energy transference. And the thing about energy transference is, at least in my experience, there's probably more that I haven't experienced. I don't know everything. For sure, I don't know everything. 
But in my experience, I can only show you this energy transference. I can't make it permanent in you. If you've ever felt that energy transference here, even a little bit, even once, or in your life somewhere, like a mystical experience, it has a beginning and an end. The only way for it to become living inside of you as a radiant self is for it to take root inside of you like a seed in good soil and grow inside you. I am only the finger pointing at the moon. Don't look at my finger. Only look at the moon. That's what Jesus was doing. He was giving this energy, this divine transference of, the, of himself, of the I am, of his Christ consciousness, of his God energy, of his universal consciousness. Call whatever language you want for that. Woven in words and given away. Given away to everyone, anyone, anyone who could hear. Scatter seeding. And three quarters of the time, his words and his energy, they land okay, but the person isn't ready. The heart isn't prepared to receive the wisdom, the noetic understanding, the mystical experience of the divine radiance he was offering energetically. And so it landed on the road, or the rock, or in the thorns, or the worms. And it was trod on, pecked up, swallowed, choked, eaten up. The energy transference that lands in good soil grows in abundance. And the thing about good soil is that it takes care. All you gardeners out there, maybe there's farmers among us too, or people who have a house, house, people with house plants. People who've once grown a plant, you know that you've got to have the right soil. Now, where I live, we had to make our own soil. I live on a glacial outwash plain, which means that the, the glacier scrubbed, scrubbed the earth to rock and ledge and deposited large amounts of gravel with a top coat of clay and a thin, top coat of clay is about this big, and a thin coat of topsoil. We had to make our soil here. We raised our garden soil year after year. We raised it, we cultivated it. We combined bags of loam, peat, compost, our own compost, uh, purchased compost, manure, mm, love shoveling that, lime and seaweed that's unique to our coast. We dug out the weeds, we cleared the stones of gravel, that always pop up with the freeze thaw. So there's always stones coming up through. But we never planted on ledge. And I didn't throw my seeds on the road. I planted in my garden. I cared for my plants. I care for my soil. Now, after I died and I came back from heaven, I embarked on a lifelong practice of creating my own good soil to be receptive to the divine seed. Once planted, once rooted, I continued to fertilize the ground to cultivate healthy growth. That's what the practices are all about. That's why I encourage them so often. More than words matter the inner journey. Because it's in the inner journey that you develop your ear to hear. Your silence gives you the capacity to hear. Your closed eyes gives you the capacity to see. The breath aerates the soil of your soul. It gives you space to receive the divine presence. And as that divine presence expands inside you, there is no going back. Unlike my soil, unlike my garden, if I don't keep adding fertilizer to it, it goes downhill fast. The soul, on the other hand, the more fertilizers you add to it, the better the soil gets and it never depletes. It never depletes. Once the seed lands in your heart, we tend it, and the more we tend it, the more it grows. We create our own good soil, and we farm our hearts. If we tend to the wisdom and the energy connection inside us, 
it will grow. It will feed you. It will change your life. It will make your life more joyous, more stable, more connected, more grounded. Seek and you will find. Don't worry about the road or the path or the rock or the thorns or the caterpillars. Because if you tend in here, they can't get you. If you are here listening, then the mystical word seed of light will grow in your good soil. It's a slow grow, but it's a strong grow. So improve the soil, improve your soil, and tend to the seeds therein planted, and you will see and experience abundance in your life, abundance in your life. One kernel of light grows into plenty of fruit. This is an energy transfer. I'm not talking about this energy transfer that goes this way, from me to you and you to me, among us, between us, within us. I'm talking about the direct energy transfer that comes down and expands and fills and overflows. That's how it gets out into the world. It overflows from us. It is the presence of heaven itself, capital H, capital I, inside us, so powerful that it becomes the world around us. That's hard for people to grasp. That your body is inside your soul, not the other way around. I felt my soul come back into my body, but once my soul was inside my body, my body became inside my soul, the two together. And my soul is bigger than my body. And the more I dive inward inside myself, the more I grow heaven in my inward place, the larger it becomes outside of my body. The larger it becomes outside of my body, the more abundance in the world I have. And I'm not talking about wealth. I'm talking about divine light in our lives. I'm talking about the radiance that pervades all things, brings all good things to you. All good things aren't necessarily things we like, but sometimes the, the bad comes before the good. You've heard the saying, maybe like attracts like. Bring light into your life and it will bring light to your life. Yeshua describes heaven in the here and the now as a single mustard seed that grows into the largest of plants. This little thing inside us, this listening, this seeing, this little seed of wisdom grows into the size of the world for us. It grew into the size of the world for me. I can't really speak for anybody else. I can only speak for myself my experience of the divine presence. It grew much bigger than I am. The abundance of heaven is living in the radiant world, connected to all there is and knowing it, which gives many experiential gifts, experiential gifts. I feel these things, courage, strength, fortitude, determination, love, joy, Peace, wisdom, kindness, compassion, empathy. Seeing the light and feeling that spirit in nature. And healing, the healing of your mind. The healing of your mind, emotions, and heart by the higher power. By the Shaktipat from heaven by the divine transference that comes and infills us and then is shared among us and strengthens all of us together. The practical aspect of this is found in daily living and with a heart aligned to the beloved. There's a practical aspect to this. You live through this. First, you got to find some kind of meditation practice. And if you're hanging out with me, you probably have one. Excellent. Keep it up. It's an incremental growth with flashes of fabulousness. 
divine mystical experiences, insights. But the practice makes a difference, whatever your practice is. Practice being in the now and listening without thought. And then, as you seek, so you shall find. And in finding, you'll discover a radiance pervading your life, emanating from the inside to the outside, where the outside and the inside become one and the same. The radiant light that lives in you becomes perceivable in the outside world. Have you ever felt an energy transference? Cultivate that. Aim at that in your heart. Aim at that in your remembrance. I can only give you a, a seed of it. You have to grow it for yourself. That's not my rule. That's just the way it is. You can prepare your soil to accept the energy. That's what meditation does. You make your soil good soil because way down deep inside, you already are goodness. And so in the practice of making your soil good, you're approaching your original goodness. I wanna thank everybody for being here and sharing time with me this morning. Um, I know that COVID is over and people are going on to their lives and they should into their communities and being outside and going kayaking as someone did this morning, um, enjoying your life. I totally get that. I'm glad that you are, but I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for coming after and watching the video. And thanks for all the gifts of support, which make Not Church possible and our three weekly live centering prayer and Kriya practice meditation groups and Mystic Tea Salon and all that stuff. Thank you. And I do counseling, conversation, and connection at peterpanagor.love. So Mystic Tea Salon's coming up at the top of the hour. The link is below. Please, if you've ever had a Shaktipat kind of experience, drop it in the comments. Tell us about it. Tell us how it changed you. Did it lead you deeper in? PeterPanagord.love. And I have a couple announcements. So um, let's see, next week, next week's not church on, on uh, the Gospel of Thomas 10 and 82. It's going to be pre recorded because I'm going to my son's wedding. And we're all going to be down there, the whole, my family. So it's going to be pre recorded. And that means that this week I'll be less, a little less attentive to all the emails and all the. Um, comments that I get. I have an email or two from last week, especially regarding the retreat that I'm going to get to today. I had to think about those um, in the next couple of days, I should say. Um, so expect a reply from me, but I'm going to be a little, you know, busy this week, happily so, and a joyous time. And reminder to join us live in Portland, Oregon, July 17th, 15th to the 17th for the Death Grief and Belief Conference, a weekend of shared wisdom, fearless exploration, and community support for unpacking toxic, toxic religious beliefs that can be harmful when facing loss and grief. <sighs> Along with Dr. Terry Daniel and many luminaries, and I'll be there. Check out the link below. All right, my friends, let's see what else we could. Thank you, Mary S. Very much. Thank you, Mary S. Um, for the super chat over there. Thanks for the for the support. Let's go flip back in here. Um, uh, just a quick, as I'm flipping back up through, I see Maureen says, hi, Maureen. Correct, there is no going back when you are in touch with the divine. We do create our garden. Perfect message for me today. Experience and abundance, freedom. Yes, yeah, someone asked me the other day. It's like that scene from... Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, where Captain Sparrow says, a boat, a ship is freedom. Meditation is freedom. It's freedom. It brings this radiance inside you. Thank you. I, I get distracted because of, because of Susie. Thank you, Susie. Um, love you and your message. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Thanks for uh, keeping being here, too. You've been here, coming for a long time. Um, I'm going to skip back up here. Thanks, Maureen, too. And see what we have here. Hey, Rob over there in Wales. Hey, Jay. Melody. Diane, I shouldn't go backwards. That's not a good strategy. 
Oh, Ellen says, this is news for me, okay? The red jellyfish are out, though. Oh, the red jellyfish are around. Hmm. Good to know. That's a coastal thing. Good to know. Um, hi, PL. Quiet energy. Good morning, Nancy. Mary, Dawn, Sue from Pennsylvania, Diana, Vineyard Worker. Hello, everyone. Ellen C. Hi there. Loons Every Day, Jay, Melody, Maureen, Tiffany, Jake from Sydney, Montana. I have been to Sydney, Montana, Jake. Long time ago, but I've been there. Um, hi, from, hi from the coast of Maine over to Sydney, Montana. Hey, Jeff, I still have faith and would love some certainty. So that's really the question a lot of people ask, how to go from faith to certainty. I'm sure that the practices of divine meditation, aiming your intention at the oneness of being will bring, will bring experience. It might take a lifetime. But the carving, that's why that's why people practice it for so long. Be, not because not because it gives them some kind of magical thing or it 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 gives them access. And so in a meditation practice over a lifetime, you will gain some certainty. I am certain of that. It only grows. May your faith grow into experience. May God give you, may the source give you, may Allah, may the universal consciousness, may the Hovier Vovier give you what you seek, what you need. I hope so, Jake. Jeff, rather, sorry. Amy, good morning. Hey, Rob, over there in Wales, Susie, Ellen. <laughs> Some seeds get eaten by birds and pooped out elsewhere. That is totally true. That is, we we definitely, thank you, Ellen. That's a fabulous thing to bring into this. And I should have brought it in myself. What a great idea. What about the seeds that the birds pecked up and then carried off and dropped somewhere else? What about those seeds, Jesus? Hmm? I have to think that through a little bit. Hey, Brother Ed, your heart is resonating with joyous love from Duncan, Oklahoma. Jay. Jesus trying to explain all that stuff to the mountain folk. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Um, Ella, Kristen, let's see, Tim, Michael. Some needs fire, some freezing, some water, some pooping, some patience, says Michael. Yeah, you know, my grandfather taught me that if I want my grass seed to sprout faster, I put it in the freezer in the middle of summer and freeze it solid and then toss it out. And then the seed thinks winter is over and sprouts quicker. That's the old farmer's alm almanac kind of way. So for sure, Michael, uh, feeling it deeply today, Peter, and our group here, feeling that I'm living in heaven on earth in this very moment. Thank you all for making it accessible. Deep breath here, says Ellen. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about, the, this magnification factor. The more we dive inward, in my, the easier it comes out of us. I, in my little yoga practice before this morning, um, before we started this morning, just by closing my eyes and following my breath and looking inside my body, the radiance naturally, gently, organically erupts inside me and spreads outside me, just naturally. That comes also in group. The more we come together, the more we practice our inner journeys individually, the more it comes out of us naturally, the stronger it is in group, in corporate, in community, in gathering together. I feel the same thing, Ellen. Every time I talk, I feel that here. An efficient system, mm -hmm, says Annie. Starla, Starbright, beautiful name, Starla Starbright. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, amen. Jeff, the seeds take root in the worst places are the ones that provide the least benefit. Only the seeds that take root in the fertile soil provide the healthiest yield. Yes, it's true. Listening and digging in my garden at this very moment and feeling very moved by today's subject. We are all gardeners, Vicky. Yes. 
I'm glad you're out there. That's great. Nature experience of the divine. Sowing fear is easy. It spreads like a weed. Oh, yeah. Sowing love brings lasting sustenance, says Jeff. Makes me more calm, says Tim. Ah, says Mary Roots. Ah. So encouraging, says Amy. Correct. Oh, I read that one already. This is lovely. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, Stellar. And Jesus also said we are all sons and daughters of God. He did. And we are. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you from James O'Toole. Peace to you, too. Thank you, James, for the super chat and for the support. I appreciate it. Thanks for everybody coming. Got a bunch of folks coming in kind of late here. Um, welcome. Oh, yes, Ellen is right. COVID is on the rebound. That's true. And I, I maybe I misspoke about that. But people are returning to their lives. But COVID is on the rebound. And I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, thank you, Ronan and Ellen. Thank you. Community, you know, I appreciate that. I have no problem with being um, reminded of things or told truths or any of that kind of stuff. It's very helpful. Did you know that there were no hermits in the monastic tradition? Not real hermits. Nobody lived off by themselves in the Western monastic tradition. They were always associated with some kind of monastic or covenant, uh, convental setting, covenantal setting, that they had to come in every day or once a week, make sure they weren't going crazy out there all by themselves, all alone. It's very helpful to have a community for paying attention to us. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, Ronan. I like being... I like that kind of help. I do. I'm, I'm very into critique. How do you grow if you don't have critique? People are watching out for you. <clears throat> From faith to certainty, don't be afraid to talk to God, says Michael. Yes. Thank you. Meditation focuses this morning. I asked UC, what, universal consciousness, what was the best for him to come to, for me to ponder? I heard that I may see. And then I heard your talk, Love the Connection, says Sue. Yeah, there is amazing synchronicity. There's a, there's a complexity. So I, I'm reading a new book, and it, now is a good time to bring that up. It's called uh, The Midnight Library. The Midnight Library. I picked it at random uh, on Audible's 45,000 reviews. That's a lot of reviews. And I picked it at random, and of course, it, the algorithm showed it to me, of course. But it's about near-death experience. Yeah. And the lives we live, the lives we choose, and all of the possibilities, all of the lives that we have that we don't live because we make choices, but all of the lives that we would be living had we made other choices. It's a fascinating book. Um, why did I bring that up? Uh, I, I, because I was thinking about it this morning, not in the context of what was just said. Um, Oh, I know that there was synchronicity. So the 7 billion people in the world, all living from choices among all of their 7 billion possible lives. Each one of us have an infinite number of possible lives. And each decision we make, makes that life the one that we're living. And of all those random exposures, but they're not really random. They're synchronistic in this complexity that's way beyond my understanding. But here it is, Sue, reading this thing this morning, asking this question, getting this answer that um, that I may see, and hearing this talk, this Dharma talk, maybe. Synchronicity, way beyond our control. Stepping into the radiance itself and letting the radiance guide us, stepping into the radiance within us, and that's the abundance that comes. That's part of the abundance that comes. There's more to it than that, but that's a big part of it. Um, checking the time here. We got a little time left. Looking f uh, for your physical garden. Look up zinc sulfate. Zinc is a mineral production. Oh, thank you. Actually, my garden's been a little weak, Robert. I'll look up zinc sulfate. Thanks. I need I'm trying to figure out what to add to it. There's missing something in my garden. Zinc sulfate. Thanks. 
Yes, but we also have to separate the wheat from the chaff. We do separate the wheat from the chaff, that's true, but ultimately the wheat and the chaff get separated, at least in my experience, um, when I died and all of the chaff was burned off of me and all that was left was the wheat. And uh, that too. Um, Cheers from Thailand. Hey, Kevin in Thailand. Wicked cool over there in Thailand. Where did you go? It skipped. Uh, when you start meditating, how do you help to keep my mind from wandering off in other thought? I have a hard time with my wandering mind. Jake, good question. Every time I begin to meditate, my mind's wandering. It starts wandering. This is why I use the same word over again and over again. And the breath, the nasal breath down to my belly and up to my third eye begin the same way all the time. And every time my mind wanders, which it does, I simply return, I remember to return to my breath and my prayer and my chant. That's all I do. I always, I remember my prayer and I remember my breath every time my mind wanders. And it will wander. And it is hard to control. Don't worry about that. Remember, your mind is like a, a wild herd of horses. And you're, you're riding on one of these horses. It's got its own mind. It's its own herd that it's doing its own thing in. You just have to keep coming back to uh, your breath and your word. And eventually the horse that you're on becomes in your control. And your control isn't an uh, iron fist. Your control is an open palm. You're bareback. You don't have a bridle. You don't have a saddle. You're bareback on this horse. And you have to breathe into the horse. Maybe I'm taking this metaphor too far. Breath, word, always return again and again and again, 10,000 times, 10,000 times. You train the brain. It'll come. It will come. I, I promise you. The human brain is made this way. It's not an easy thing. It's simple, but it's not easy. So keep at it, Jake. And um, come and join us on Mondays and Wednesdays and Tuesdays. Practicing group helps. Um, that certainty of knowing rather than just believing is hard to stay in, but I don't give up. The more you practice and aim your intention at the divine itself, the easier it gets along the path. Don't give up. That's the whole deal. Keep coming back. When your mind wanders, keep coming back. If your meditation doesn't work today or this week, keep coming back. Keep coming back. That's the secret or one of the secrets to it. You're welcome, Sheila. Oh, thank you, Kim. She says, you're amazing. Uh, true, and one weed can destroy a whole garden. Yeah, bad weed. You ever get you ever get bramble bushes? You ever try to get out bramble bushes? They have a, they root underground. They send out tentacles under the ground, sprouts under the ground, and they grow up everywhere. They're hard to get rid of. One weed, it's very hard to get rid of. One of those thorns. Um, Got to keep after it. All right, let's see. Where are we? What's going on with Candyman? Something I must have missed. Uh, something that I missed with Starla. Skipping back through. I don't know what I missed with you, Starla, but whatever it is with you and Candyman, blessings be upon you both. Jamini, actually, this is Amy Bright. Hey, Amy. Funny how I've been very focused on building soil through all sorts of kinds of natural approaches of farming. Hmm, nice. Oh, you read the Midnight Library? Well, I'm not surprised, Ellen. Did you like it? I love it. The writing is fabulous. It's the writing alone is fabulous. It's really great. Um, Great metaphor, building our skills to save the planet, ourselves, body, earth, soul, life, love. Well, I'm so sorry, Starla. I don't know what it is, but people are sorry, so I'm going to join in with them. His twin brother just misses him terribly. Oh, of course. Peace be upon the twin that lives. May that connection never cease. Humate for my soil. Humate, thank you. 
<sighs> Biodynamic inputs, soil building builds the topsoil. Biodynamic inputs. Thanks. This is really good gardening help. Thank you all. Using first person for sayings always opens up my understanding. Thank you, Kristen. That's what I keep trying to do. I hope that's, I'm glad that you like it. It seems to make sense to me. Jesus always talking from direct experience. Of course, it would make sense that what he's thinking is about himself. Is he talking about it? Um, Starla, the amount of grief you have is now it is the reciprocal for the intensity of your love. Who did you lose, Starla? Saying a prayer for you, sending light energy to you, all together, to Starla. Healing, peace. Elf, OMG, I always thought that separating the wheat and the chaff was God separating the righteous from the wicked, but now in your experience, it's not that, it's the chaff surrounding our hearts. Yeah, it was my chaff. I have a kernel of wheat inside me, that burnished beautiful origin of myself from which my spirituality grows in the world. And the chaff, that all gets burned off. Well, at least it did for me. Thank God. All those who have loved ones who have passed to the spirit realm, know that if you think of them with love, they will hear you and feel you. They are here and always with you, says Robert. So be it. such a funny contrast this morning. We have this two conversations going on. The gout weed is the worst. I haven't had gout weed. Don't want it, apparently. Oh, Candyman, his passing eventually brought me to study mysticism. Out of grief can come connection to the divine. That's one of the great powers of it. It's one of the great powers of brokenness, of lostness of, through grief is the arrival at the divine presence, which is eternal, which connects back to the lost one, the one we love who we can't be with anymore, brings them closer. Thank you for saying so, Candyman. <laughs> and Michael says blackberry jelly is delicious, talking about my blackberry gram brambles. Well, that's why we have blackberry brambles. <laughs> that's why we have blackberry brambles growing everywhere, is for the blackberries. <sighs> my lawn is weeds. My lawn is weeds, too. I love that. I'm in no mow Maine right now. I have mowed a little bit, okay? But most of my yard is weeds wildflowers pollinator food i'm so glad to hear that maureen beautiful flowers and bees come to my dandelions and little purple flowers the little ones that only grow that big i should know the names of those but i don't know what it is they're kind of spiky with little purple head heads all the way around oh they're beautiful and they breed and the bees love them um, i accept my weeds from mother earth me too synchronization the now listen and learn that you read this morning oh well, what do you know? Yes. Um, noticing that your mind has wandered is the integral part of meditation, of mindfulness meditation. Don't be discouraged. It means you're becoming more aware, says Kevin. I love wisdom that comes out of this group. That's what Mystic Tea Salon is all about. It's, it's a, a wisdom group of mystical experiencers coming to share together in humility and kindness. Um, there is no human chaff. All I know is that the chaff was gone when I was in my soul self. It was burned off by the purgative fire of divine love. This is all metaphor. Another great metaphor for my experience coming back, as it turns out, is in the Midnight Library. 
book. I was like, that would have made a great metaphor for what, one of the things I've been trying to talk about here forever. Um, I was stripped of all the things I didn't need to enter into the state, unitive state of being. And in the unitive state of being, there was no more chaff. It didn't exist anymore. Not like it was gone, but like it never was. I need a drink of water. <clears throat> right on, Jeff. Organized religion had taught me thinking the same about wheat and chaff, but have, but following love away from the doctrine showed me the truth. That's what Jesus was talking about. It's what he was saying. It's just that um, it takes a mystic to know a mystic. Like attracts light. Like attracts like. Light sees light. Light hears light. Like attracts like. It takes a mystic to know a mystic. Rumi writes about grief being sweet. Mm. There's my friend Rumi. The Heart Math International Association is a wonderful and amazing organization. They illustrate and demonstrate the power of group meditation. Check it out. Join their association. Thanks, Brother Ed. Perhaps just as the soil needs to be broken up and tilled so tender roots may take hold, we experience the turmoil of living to prepare our personal soil. I like it. What a great extension, Wanda. I turned my soil yesterday and disrupted the lives of many worms, earthworms. Uh, they're fine, of course, because I use a pitchfork, not a shovel. But um, still, I, I, I destroyed their world. I hope they're living a better life today. Probably have more food. It's all turned up, so they have access to food they didn't have access to before. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. Um, no mowing any. No mowing over for Annie. Excellent. Following love away from doctrine. I like that, Jeff. Thank you. I never thought I would lose three loved ones in one month's time span, especially. Oh, my God, Starla. You lost your son and two others. Sending you energy and love, peace and healing. Although I know there's none. None that can take away the sting anyway. I'd give you a big, huge, long hug with no words if I could. Give you one with my heart instead. My condolences. Hmm. Oh, cursum perfectio. Sorry, I mean no human being is chaff. Right. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there isn't. Yeah, that's totally. I'm 100% with you there, brother or sister. I'm not sure what or they, them. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you clarified that. That's great. Um, two or more gathered. Does that mean one can't do it as easily? No, you can do it. Um, I do do it. I did do it. Most of my entire life, I meditated alone. Okay, so here's until I formed our meditation groups, I was meditating alone and doing my yoga by myself. And I, sometimes for about five years, true, I was going to yoga class just because I was lonesome in my life. Like, you know, I'm, I live basically as a hermit out here with my family, um, but so I'm by myself a lot. So my social life was going to yoga class. Okay. But all of that, that part said, yes, you can practice it internally. It just takes extra determination. And the divine light, because it's in you, grows inside you no matter where you are. It's just easier in a group. It's not that it's harder alone. It's that it's easier in a group. The natural state is individual because you're an individual and that's the way you're made. So, but yeah, group, it makes it easier. Uh, we are social beings after all, physically and emotionally and um, politically and socially and all this kind of stuff. That's redundancy. But also that's true spiritually. We're social spiritual beings. The light is shared among us. And it's easier to say, um, turn the garden with somebody else than it is to do it by yourself. Um, and yesterday I had someone with me as I turned the garden over. It made it a lot easier. Meditation in group makes it easier. That's all. You can do it by yourself for sure. I definitely did for decades. Yeah, not like it was gone, but like it never was. The hardest part about coming back to life was 
entering back into suffering that had not existed when I was dead, didn't exist, never was, wasn't there, not lost, not burned away to ash, and you still got the ash, I gotta shovel out. Nope, no ash. Dematerialized. Maybe that's the word. Dematerialized. All right, we've got, um, I gotta go. Oh my gosh, I was having such a time, good time this morning. Um, peace and love to all of you. I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm going to turn on Zoom. Um, I'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, Mr. T. Salam. Namaste. Thank you all for liking the video. Thanks for subscribing. If you've been hanging around for a while, please subscribe. It helps. Um, thanks for your contributions that help support this whole thing. Peace and love, everybody. I'll see you soon. Namaste.